Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today, I wanted to talk about, if it wasn't obvious enough, the St. Louis Blues. And the reasoning for that is I've seen what's been happening with them this season and it has been pretty amazing on their part to say the least. And obviously if you read the title, it's most likely going to say, can they repeat? I really think they can and I'm gonna break down everything regarding them currently this season and just why they have such a strong chance at making it all the way back and winning the Stanley Cup. So to start off, the St. Louis Blues this season have been on fire, had a complete, um, really um, tremendous start to the season versus how they started last year, being way out of a playoff spot um, in the first half of the season last year, then making the moves they did, bringing Jordan Baines in with the team, um, firing Mike Yeo and bringing in um, uh, Barubi to be there. Um, head coach and just fantastic for them and since then they have kept rolling they haven't had that kind of slump of being in the playoffs for a long time from last season and that is just fantastic and what admires me most about this team more than anything is what they have managed to do without arguably their best forward Vladimir Tarasenko who got hurt 10, 10 games into the season who had a point per game pace at that point um, and is out for the at least the regular season. I don't know about playoffs as yet to be seen. But along with him, other injuries have obviously um, uh, happened throughout the season, including Sammy Blay, who is honestly one of my favorite players on the Blues, a very young and upcoming forward who stood out for them big time in the playoffs uh, last season for them. And he got hurt uh, pretty early in the season, and, and who knows when he's going to be back. I'm pretty sure that's he's out at least the rest of the season. I could be wrong on that, but I know he's definitely out long term. But let's talk about the St. Louis Blues. All right. Currently, they have played 47 games this year, and they have a record of 30, 10, and 7, 7 being the overtime losses. They are tied for first in all of the NHL in, um, in uh, you know, points, and they are tied with uh, the Washington Capitals in that column, and obviously they are first overall in the um, Western Conference. So, they have really been fantastic, and a lot of players have obviously incorporated into that. And looking at the pace they are on this season, they are easily on pace to have a better season than they did last year. Obviously, they had a tremendous second half, but they finished the season third in the uh, Central Division and had a total of 99 points in the 82 games. And let's talk about their goal leaders, their assist leaders, and overall point leaders. We're going to talk about the top three that you would see if you looked them up yourself. But starting off with who, in my opinion, has been the biggest part of the St. Louis Blues' success this season, has been David Perron. He's currently first in goal scoring with, them, with 20 goals. He's second in regards to assists with 26. And overall, he's first with the team in points with 46 points in 47 games. What David Perron has done for the St. Louis Blues team has been remarkable, given just how long it's been. He's been in the league for quite some time now, at least 10 years. He's... Uh, um, currently um, in his second season with the Blues, um, second or third, coming back to him for his third tenure. This is the third time he's been with the St. Louis Blues after bouncing around uh, numerous times in previous years. And he's already three goals away from um, tying how many goals he scored last season. And he has already tied the total points he had last season in 10 fewer games because he played 57 games last season. So Prawn has been huge for them. You can expect him to get at least in point basically every game. He didn't score last night. St. Louis obviously beat the Anaheim Ducks yesterday, and that was another huge win for them. Um, I believe they won 4-1. to one. But St. Louis has just been on this tear. Like I said, they are 7-2-1 and one in their last 10 games. Just truly dominant. In my opinion, the, the deepest team in the NHL, even with the injuries that they have had, the fact that they have had this next man up kind of mentality there, Similar to other teams in the league, like the Pittsburgh Penguins especially, it has really been remarkable. But going back to Perron, he has been fantastic for them. He is on pace to get 35, 40 goals this season and be a point-per-game player. And this would be easily the best season he's had in his career. Given how, much, how long he's been in the league, that is remarkable. And then you look right behind him in the goal scoring, is then Braden Shen with 17 goals. And he also um, is second in the team of 40 points. Shen is really interesting to me because I remember when he got traded three seasons ago 
to the St. Louis Blues from the Philadelphia Flyers in return for that that year's um, 27th overall pick that became Morgan Frost. So that was a good pick by the Flyers because Morgan looks like a very promising forward for them in the future. But then they also had a conditional pick, and I don't know what that turned into. And Yari Lutera was the biggest piece at the time besides the first rounder in that trade. And Yari Lutera went from progressing really well to just completely flunking with the Flyers. His first season in the league, he had 44 points, and it got down to 30. And then the season he was traded from the Blues with the Flyers, he only had 20 or so points. I believe it was um, 60 games that season. And Lutera, in a total of 89 games with the Flyers, in parts of two seasons, only had 11 points. And now he's out of the NHL. So that is huge, because I remember when they traded Shen, I was like, they're so dumb. Like, I I realized that maybe Cap went into that situation as well. But, damn, Braden, uh, Braden Shen has been fantastic for the Blues. He has brought so much more depth down the middle for them and makes it easier for Ryan, Ryan O'Reilly to not have everything on his shoulders. So Shen has been fantastic, like I said. And then third in the goal scoring is Jaden Schwartz with, uh, um, with 17 as well. And... Schwartz was fantastic in the playoffs um, last season for the Blues. Huge part of their success. And has been a longtime guy on this Blues team that has been through it all. So that's great to see. Now in regards to assists, um, Ryan O'Reilly leads the team with 32. Then second is David Perron with 26, as I mentioned. And third is Alexander um, Petrangelo with 26. Petrangelo has been a monster for them as well. Like I said, going to be really interesting what they do with him if they're able to lock him up long term or if they're going to let him walk at the end of the season. And then points, Perron, like I said, 46. Second, like I said, Braden Chen. And then third, um, Ryan O'Reilly as well with 40. But their forward group has been fantastic. And their defense has been fantastic as well, like I said. And what I truly admire more, and I've talked about this in previous videos about the Blues, um, especially talking about the Central Division. So if you haven't seen that from like uh, when I first started this channel, please go check it out because you'll see how much they have progressed since then. But... I love their depth forwards, even with the injuries that they've had. And I understand uh, um, Oscar Sundquist has been playing in the top six, but he's usually, you know, a depth forward. But he goes all throughout the lineup. Oscar Sundquist has been huge for them. I'm a huge fan of his game. Um, really brings every aspect that you would need in a hockey player with them. And Sundquist has 19 points on the season. But then you look at their other depth forwards. Robert Thomas in his sophomore season this year has been huge. He has 25 points, so he's on pace to have at least a 40-point season, you know, so that is great to see. Then Tyler Bozak, who has really been solid for the Blues since coming to them, really seemed like he was falling off um, in his latter years with the Leafs, but he has really been huge in a limited role with the St. Louis Blues. He has 24 points, so he's on pace for at least 40 as well. And then um, right below him with 20 points is Ivan Barbashev, another bomb six uh, forward that I'm a huge fan of, and they just... Night in and night out, they match up so well against any other team's bottom six and really gives the St. Louis Blues a, a good chance at winning, especially when their top six, for whatever reason, can't get the scoring done. But now that's, a, that's enough about the forwards. Let's talk about the goaltenders. Jordan Bainton and Jake Allen have been a fantastic duo, 1A, 1B uh, goaltending situation for St. Louis. Like I said, Bainton um, really got the starting job as soon as he came in the league last year in, um, I believe, uh, January. And he has been lights out since then. Huge, huge factor in them winning the cup, of course. But Bainton, this season, 33 games played, has 22 wins, 7 losses, and 2 overtime losses. Uh, 4 overtime losses, pardon me. And it has a um, goals allowed average of 2.47 and a save percentage of 917. So really solid. Another great start for Bainton in his first official season as a NHL starter. And then the backup, Jake Allen, who is thriving in his limited role with the Blues and is really understanding what it takes to win. And, it, and it's great to see that he's embracing the fact that even though he is no longer the starter, he will do anything he can possibly do to help this team succeed. So Allen, in 16 games played, has eight wins, three losses, and three overtime losses, has a goals allowed average of 2.27, which is fantastic, and a save percentage of 926. So... They have been amazing together, this overall St. Louis Blues team, like I said, just so impressive on a nightly basis, especially with not having that guy in like Vladimir Tarasenko. What they have been able to do without him baffles me, truly, and the way that the players have stepped up to uh, make sure that this team has a strong shot at another cup run, 
including David Perron especially, is just remarkable. I can't say enough great things about this team. And in regards to their team statistics, they currently have the 12th best offense in the league, and they have the 4th best power play, so they're averaging 3.23 goals a game. And then they have the 5th best defense currently, and their, uh, uh, their penalty kill is tied for 10th in the league, so solid, above average still. And they only allow 2.66 goals a game. So everything is going right for the St. Louis Blues. They have had a great start to this year. And overall, the past couple of months especially, they have just been rolling. And it's going to be really interesting to see what the future holds for them. If I had to make a pick now, I would definitely pick the St. Louis Blues as, as the best team to come out of the West. Um, take away the points, just how I look at their lineup stacking up against other contending teams in the West. Um, obviously... Another thing that could factor in is if, say, the um, Blues win the Western Conference this year, is that going to linger on them? Is that going to make them overly confident? Is that going to make them slack off towards the end of the regular season like a lot of other teams did, like the Tampa Bay Lightning, for example, and then really affects them? And I never understood that mentality. I understand that you want to keep your players healthy um, throughout the last couple of weeks. When you're locked in, you're not going anywhere. You're making the playoffs and um, in the perfect spot in the standings, but Having your um, starters not play for a decent amount of time does kind of get them off track of things. And that's shown with previous teams that have had um, great success during the season in previous years. So hopefully that doesn't happen for the Blues case. Um, but my best advice with them, with them is to just keep chugging and have that same mentality they had last year. Because it seems a lot of times a lot of underdog teams have such deep runs because they're in playoff mode as soon as January starts in the hunt of making playoffs. So they are nonstop. You know, they're battling injuries, they're going through it all, and they're not stopping for one second because they want to reach that ultimate goal. And they did it last season. Let's see if they can do it again this season. But that is all I have to say about the St. Louis Blues. I really just want to make a video on them talking about individual teams still. But they have really impressed me this season as they have ha they've um, impressed the rest of the league. And just with all the adversity that they have faced, they have continued to overcome it. And I only hope the best things for them in the future. So... That is going to conclude this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe if you like my content, more NHL content consistently. Um, if you're interested in uh, previous videos, go check them out. And um, expect me to be back um, in a day or two. So thanks.